Today on Real Life, discover truth deep in the Word of God. Bible teacher and TV host Rod Hembry joins from Canada to bring a powerful word of encouragement for you today. That and more today on Real Life. that you're joining us today on Real Life where we bring you hope, inspiration, and encouragement. I'm Sydney Goldman here with Tom Hollis and Anna Fry is going to join us a little bit in a moment. But Tom, you know, we all are about sprinkling a little joy in everyone's lives. Sprinkle I like a that. Joy. Sprinkle, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be doing that today, but you know, we, we like to sprinkle joy. You know, we, we're all going through various things. We're going through times that, uh, especially in this time, yeah. we're still kind of figuring out, I hate the term the new normal, but we're yeah. figuring out what to do, right? Right. You know, it's like uh, traffic's getting a little bit more. It is. People are getting back to work and that's okay. That's good. We're, we're glad for that. Um, but we have, a, we have a verse that I think it, it applies so much in, in this season and all seasons. It's uh, from 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 through 18. It says this, always be full of joy. Never stop praying. Whatever happens, always be thankful. This is how God wants you to live in Christ Jesus. That's a pretty good little bunch of stuff right there, isn't it? It's all a little like checklist, you know, yeah. pray at all times, be joyful. It's good. That's like one of my favorite words is joy. And I just think, you know, in these, like just we were talking about, you know, things are shifting, things are changing. And I think in the midst of it all, Tom, that we do have to have joy. We got to keep our eyes fixated on Jesus. And, you know, sometimes I know like a lot of us, it's like, oh, we want to control this, control that. But you know what? It's all in God's hands. And we just have to just tune our faces to him and just trust and know that God's got it under all control. That is so true. Uh, that, that thing about pray without ceasing, pray at all times, that's hard to remember, but you know what? We have to. You know, we, we uh, this week have been, uh, we, we started off praying for this man, Ravi Zacharias. He passed away earlier and uh, he is uh, an, a great influence on my life and on many lives. We wanted to just play a, a video. This is a video of him at the Billy Graham uh, funeral. But listen to what he says about Billy Graham and how much it applies to Ravi's ministry as well. Charles Wesley said, God buries his workmen, but his work goes on. Wesley came, he left. You know, Sunday came, he left. Moody came, he left. He had all these great speakers. Billy served his time. We can never live in the past, but we must stand on their shoulders. We must stand on their shoulders to look forward because they are followers like people like Apostle Paul and Augustine and all of those. We, they stood on their shoulders. We cannot lose heart, nor can we place the ultimate confidence in just a human being. Our confidence is in the person of Jesus Christ, the Word becoming flesh and dwelling among us. That's who we preach. Paul says we don't preach ourselves. Billy never preached himself. So a great voice has been lost, but the message goes on, and that's what we will continue proclaiming. We are living in a confluence of great uncertainty with great hunger. I've never seen such uncertainty in our world, but neither have I seen such hunger. The universities we go to are packed with thousands of students coming to here. We must honor God with the truth and do it in a way, you know, Spurgeon had a sermon called Gathering at the Center. We come through different paths, but we gather at the center. And so our path will be different, but the center is the same. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless Thank you. God be with you. Thank you so much. Uh, people come, people go but the message stays the same. Yeah, that is such, I love what he says, like, you know, you're standing on the shoulders. So many great men and women of God that have come before us and Ravi is one of them now in the hands of Jesus. And, you know, it just, it's a reminder, it just inspires us, right? To like walk in those footsteps. And I love that, Tom, you gave us a bunch of quotes from Ravi and I love this one that he said, yes, if truth is not gird, undergirded by love, it makes the possessor of that truth obnoxious and the truth repulsive. And Ravi is a man that truly walked in love, showing the truth of the gospel. And I also like this one too, it says, there's no greater discovery than seeing God as the author of your destiny. And what a destiny Ravi had. I, I was looking at clips last night because I knew we wanted to use one today. And I was just blessed by what he had to say about his life. And then uh, seeing him in a, in a big auditorium and seeing him you know, at, on college campuses, uh, going in where Christians fear to tread sometimes, going right in there and sharing the love of God and doing it in a way 
that could win the hearts of people, not just have a win an argument. Mm -hmm. you know? That's that is so good. Yeah. And speaking of honoring, you know, something that's happening right now is a 24-hour online vigil to honor the Americans who lost their lives to COVID-19. It's being called Naming the Loss. Now, the vigil started Wednesday on Facebook, and it will end this afternoon at 2 p.m. And, Tom, this is really incredible. Different groups from across the country are taking turns reading the names of those who died from the virus. Organizers of the vigil say they hope to humanize and honor each person, especially in a time when we've had to stay physically apart. And, you know, there's no central database listing the more than 90,000 Americans who passed away from the coronavirus. So the vigil volunteers had to gather 10,000 names from obituaries and Facebook memorial pages. And volunteers will recite the names in between readings, songs, and prayers. I really like that a lot, you know, just in this season yeah. of time, you know, I know from my own personal, just seeing on social media and different things, several people that have, you know, lost loved ones. And so our hearts go out to you if you've lost a loved one or even if you're battling with COVID-19. And, you know, we're always here for you. You can give us a call at 888-665-4483. But now we want to head over to Anna because you have some good news for us to share. Yes, I sure do. It's so good to be with you today. And we love getting your letters and hearing how Cornerstone Television is blessing you like this one from Etta. Oh my goodness, we loved what you had to say. Cornerstone Network, I just wanted to let you know how much I enjoyed your station. I love watching Sister to Sister, Hard Questions, Recipes from Arlene, Dashing Dish. I'm a new Christian and Hard Questions and Sister to Sister are really helpful to help me understand some things. I lost my husband to cancer back in November and your station really helps, especially in this time when we are housebound. And so Etta, I just wanna first say thank you for uh, taking the steps in your faith to draw close to the Lord, to really dig in and try to understand what he wants to speak to your heart and how you in this time of grief and this time of hardship, that you are drawing close to him. And I just pray that you're feeling his presence and his arms wrapping around you. So uh, keep watching us and we hope that we continue to be a blessing to you. All right, I'm gonna throw it right back to Tom. Thanks, Anna, and thanks for the good news. You know, dis discovering the Bible is a daily adventure, and our next guest has been taking people on that journey for many years. Rod Hembry is a longtime friend, and you can see his Bible Discovery show right here on Cornerstone Network. Rod, welcome to Real Life. Thank you very much, Tom. It is great to be here, and uh, already there's a lot of uh, emotion involved in this because, uh, of course, I met Rabbi Zacharias, and uh, I knew him uh, to some extent. I didn't know him well. But uh, when we began our church journey uh, some 20 years ago, of course, I had told my wife, I said, don't worry, because when we got married in 1981, I said, I'll never be a pastor. <laughs> my, uh, my uncles were pastors. My grandfather, both sides of the families were pastors. And, of course, my dad was a pastor. And uh, anyway... In uh, the year 2000, the Lord really uh, dealt with me, and I wrestled with God for two weeks. And the two weeks I wrestled with God, I didn't really pay attention. But, you know, when you wrestle with God, you're not going to win. And uh, anyway, I said to my, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I, I will will start a church, but I will talk to my wife first, because my wife has to know about this. And I knew in my heart, she didn't want to be a pastor's wife. And I knew this is great, because she'll say no. And I'll say, well, Lord, you know, there, there it is. I took my wife out to an expensive restaurant. Actually, it wasn't expensive. It was Tim Hortons Donuts. Anyway, I took her to a, a restaurant. That's a great and, uh, right. That's a, said, what's Janice, wrong with that? That's the right place to go. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it is the right place to go, I'll tell you. And they're still open right now. But anyway, um, I said to my wife, I said, I think the Lord is asking us to start a church. And, uh, you know, I expected her to come back with a lot of things, but I did not expect her to come back with tears. And she started to cry. And it was like, what's going on? And obviously the Lord had dealt with her and talked with her. And uh, so we started this church. And I said to God, I said, now, Lord, I need to find people besides my father. I need to find people to uh, train me and to help me in this ministry. One of the people that I came up with because uh, I had heard about him was Rabbi Zacharias. Uh, this was an amazing guy, and uh, so I took his radio programs and the videos that he had done, and I began to do a study and follow him everywhere that we uh, possibly could go and see and all of that, 
And for about nine years, I studied him, and he taught me so much. He taught me about apologetics. But, you know, the one thing that Ravi taught me was he, he showed me in his own way, and I again, I just met him once, but he, he showed me by listening to his ministry how to love people. And he would go to these schools, and uh, they would be just, I mean, ready to go. They had, you know, atheists standing there, and they were ready to attack him. And he never, he never attacked back. He never, um, you know, chopped people's head off or anything like that. He yeah. gently dealt with people. And that, that gentleness was a fruit of the Spirit. And I, I thought, you know, this is amazing, Lord, because I read in 1 Corinthians 13 about the love of God. And I had seen so many apologists who really didn't exemplify that. And But Ravi was an amazing man. He... He showed us, and I. He said, "You know, well, all, they've all come and gone, but there's there's uniqueness to each one of the evangelists." And Ravi was a unique evangelist. And I met him back in 2011, and uh, he was walking through the lobby. I was at we were at the, the Hilton Hotel in uh, Ottawa, where there was a convention going on. And I sat down and I in the lobby, and I said, "Lord, I'd love to meet Ravi Zacharias. He's here, but I know you don't have time." And <laughs> She just comes in the door, <laughs> Ravi Zacharias, and I stood up, and he he just came, he looked right at me, and he came to me and stuck his hand out, and uh, he said, I'm Ravi Zacharias. I said, I know, <laughs> and I want to thank you for all the work you've done and all the work you do and how you've impacted my life. I know you've got to go, but I just want to thank you, and uh, you know, it really was uh, an amazing experience because he was, to be honest with you... Um, I loved him on television and loved him on radio, but he was even more genuine, of course, being there. And uh, it was um, unbelievable. So we, we loved Rabbi Zacharias and all of that. So it was good to see uh, the video that you put on. Well, let me ask you about uh, that, translating what you learned there. How can we be, we're, we're going through a unique situation in time and history right now. How can we exemplify that love of God in the, in the midst of all this. We're not, we're, we're not able to walk up to someone and shake their hand right now. How can we exemplify that, that love of God in your view? You know, it's interesting because my, uh, when we started going through this, of course, we're in the Toronto area, and Toronto has about 5 million people in this area, and uh, it's a big city. It's this, the third largest city uh, in North America, New York and Chicago, or New York and L.A. and then Chicago, and Toronto's about the size of Chicago. And um, it's, a, it's a big city, and, and so we often uh, touch people, shake their hands and all of that. And when they came out and they said, you know, the whole idea about physical distancing and all of that, uh, we began to get used to it. We've been doing that now for over two months. And... Um, and I began to think about it. My daughter, Corey, who is also on the program, and she's an outstanding uh, way to uh, use the program to teach people, and she has her degrees and all that. She said to me, you know, Dad, they have not told us we cannot teach the Bible, but they've told us to stay apart physically. And um, so we've done that. And I prayed. I said, Lord, that, that's really wise. And help me to understand um, how to do this because because I'm an American, and I'm a Canadian, I'm a dual citizen. Help me to understand uh, how to do this, because we're not meant to live in isolation like this. And uh, so the Lord, he gave me uh, an idea, and that is to start a prayer meeting uh, live at 3 o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We started every day to begin with, because there was so much activity going on. Mm -hmm. But we're Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, live prayer meeting from 3 to 4. That's one way we did it. And another way we did it is we, we begin to uh, explore the Bible and do the Bible. We set up, of course, the social distancing, or as I like to call it, the physical distancing. Um, and we began to do that. And, and I can tell you that the Lord has used this virus. Of course, he didn't create the virus, but he used this virus to teach the church something about evangelism that the church needs to get on the internet, the church needs to get involved in media, and the church needs to, to do those kinds of things to bring people together. Now, your question about physical distancing, how do we approach this? 
there's a lot of people with a lot of things. You know, there's I've talked to people who have conspiracies. Well, this is a conspiracy, and that's a conspiracy. And every, you know, there's been a conspiracy since sin has born on the planet. Um, but there is one man who he was also God, Jesus Christ, and uh, there is no conspiracy that can overcome Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ rules. So if Jesus Christ has allowed this to happen, then we need to explore, God, help us to figure this out. And, and they released a good example of this as they released people to walk at least, you know, six feet apart from each other in the city of Toronto. And uh, I said to the Lord, that's interesting. And this person uh, came on the prayer meeting and said to me, and announced to the staff we saw it happen. God began to deal with her about walking around Dundas Square in the city of Toronto, five million people. And God began to deal with her. And so she started. And so she keeps herself physically distanced, but she walks around and prays for the city, prays for the people. You know what happened is just yesterday, more people called in and said, hey, I live in Toronto. Can I join you? Six feet from you. Can I join you? So there's... There's creative ways that God is allowing us to think about and pray for people who need to hear the Lord, need to understand God. And uh, that, that creative way is fascinating. Now, of course, I'm in my ham radio room here, and uh, I'm a ham radio operator because I used to be an engineer and all that business. But uh, there's a lot of material. To everybody's talking about the coronavirus and COVID-19 and all that business. But I can tell you that God has allowed this. So how do we how do we make sure that we understand that the Lord is telling us things? We need to be aware that God is speaking. So rather than let the news talk to us about how many people have got it and all that, we need to go back to our Bible. We need to go back to God's word. And we need to listen to what the Lord has said to us. And he has said a lot. But we need to live our our life in faith, not in fear. Live your life in faith, not in fear. Sure. And if we do that, then God will speak to us new ways to evangelize. So I, I don't know. That's a long answer to your question. Sorry, Tom. But I just feel that, that God is speaking and telling people what to do right now. And some of them feel like, I can't go outside. I can't do it. But, but listen to the Lord because it's very, very important. That's a good word, Rod. Thank you so much. We appreciate your ministry and we appreciate from Project 90 to uh, Life Lessons to Quick Study to Bible Discovery. God is using you. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm reading right in the first a few uh, uh, chapters of First Chronicles and your dad always uh, said, you know, we got to plow through those all those genealogies. And uh, that's what I'm, I always think of that when I'm going through there. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Tom. Well, right after this break, Philip Cameron will be with us to talk about how God is moving in Moldova. We'll be right back. Are you one of thousands of people who are tormented by fear during the crisis? Do you fear losing all that's dear to you? Worry no more. Learning to know God as provider will help you discover the secrets to a dynamic Christian life free from unnecessary worry. Nearly four decades ago, Cornerstone Television founder Russ Bixler wrote this life-changing book. The principles inside have transformed many readers and they still apply today. While supplies last, we're offering this special gift to you along with our Cornerstone TV tote bag and pen when you sign up for easy automatic giving. On Easy Pledge, you don't have to go outside for stamps and envelopes and you only provide your credit or debit card one time. Your faithful gift will go to work automatically to spread the hope of the gospel through Christian television. To join Easy Pledge and request your special thank you gifts today, call 888-665-4483 or click our donate button at ctvn.org. Well, we're joined again by Cornerstone Cares partner, Philip Cameron from, uh, he is the founder of Orphan's Hands. And uh, God has opened up a new uh, area of ministry for him, a new place to touch young lives. And uh, Philip, thank you for, uh, so much for being on the program again. Tell us a little Great bit here, about Tom. what God has opened the door to. 
Well, Corners from Cares has helped us purchase and, and finish a village called Vatra Village in Moldova. When a young person leaves the orphanage or comes from a poverty-stricken village, they have nowhere to go, nowhere to study. And because they have no uh, um, opportunity to go forward in their education, then they become um, the, the, the victim of trafficking. Mm -hmm. So this village is of six, with six houses in it. It's an amazing place. And God's helped us to finish them. We've got four of them open right now. And um, it is the most beautiful place. So they come to us. They become part of our Orphan's Hands family, stay in school, and at the same time, find out about Jesus. And we're turning orphans into sons and daughters, and then sons and daughters into missionaries. And we, and, we, have, um, we have some pictures. We have, uh, we have a few pictures yeah. that you sent us. There's the inside. You're, you're uh, remodeling uh, or finishing yeah. up. An interesting point. Look at that floor. That's the second floor. That is solid concrete. You see how thick that floor is? Mm -hmm. All these houses are, are solid stone buildings. So we take these, we, they're 80% finished when we bought them, and we're, we're finished them. That's one of the toilets in the building. And um, it is, they are beautiful homes. They were built for rich people, and the project fell through, and we bought the houses and finished them. And um, so it's, it's just an amazing place physically. It's a beautiful place. It's beside one of the largest lakes in Moldova. And um, so our kids come there, live in a world that they could never have believed possible before, but at the same time receive an education and the gift of salvation from Jesus. And um, Cornerstone Cares is part of this miracle taking place right now in Moldova. I, I see you've got, there, there's furniture, looks like furniture that's just been delivered and uh, yes. is being Shipped set. from America, shipped in <laughs> containers from America. That is tremendous. The place is incredible. It's beautiful it's beyond fact. belief. <laughs> Their houses are nicer than my house. I was teasing. I was, I was there a month ago, and I said, guys, your house is better than my house is. But I think that's, isn't that just like Jesus, to honor the orphan that's been rejected and, and, and abused all their lives, to be put in a home that's absolutely beautiful for the, for the glory of the Lord. And, and God's redeeming this because I know that we don't really have time for the full story right now, but this was built to be some sort of a resort and then there was a yeah. problem with the lake and so the resort fell through and then the lake was cleaned yeah. up and then here it, it came to you. Uh, what what an incredible miracle. gift of God. It is a miracle, Tom. So d just tell us a, a little bit about uh, the changed lives. I mean, that's, that's God's oh. heart. What, is, what has Orphan's Hands, what has the ministry in Moldova done in the lives of these young people? Well, it's, it's, it's transformative. You can't understand, if you could understand every day of your life being told by those in charge and responsible for you, you're garbage, you're nothing. Nothing plus nothing will be, always be nothing. Your mother doesn't want you. Your father doesn't want you. You're trash. Every day they're told that. So there's no point in studying because, well, I'm just an orphan. And we come to them, and the theme that we have and what we, what we put in their minds every day, if you are born, God has a plan. If you are born, God has a plan. And by reinforcing the positive rather than the negative, they are opening up. We've got kids right now studying to be doctors. We have some that are lawyers. And God is taking the, the, the tail and making them the, the head by the power of the gospel and by love. And now these kids are in these days out feeding the homeless and mm -hmm. the, the destitute and the broken. And so the orphans' hands are feeding those in need. It's amazing. Oh, it's fantastic. When, when Vatra Village is completely outfitted, how many uh, orphans, how many young people will you, will you be able to house there? We will house 90 in Vatra Village, but we also have a home in the Ukraine, in Odessa, and that can hold 24. So we are growing and uh, just expanding in every direction, even, even through the pandemic se season that we're in right now. That is so good. Well, Philip, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. And... Thank you, Cornerstone Cares. <laughs> thank you so much. We're so thankful to partner with you, so thankful for what God's doing. Well, we'll be back uh, right after this to pray for your prayer request. But right now, let's see what's on tomorrow's Real Life. Tomorrow on Real Life Signs and Wonders, join us for anointed praise and worship. Receive a right now word and powerful message 
and celebrate communion with us. That's tomorrow on Real Life Signs and Wonders. Man, well, we sure have enjoyed listening to some wonderful interviews. And something that um, Rod Hembury said was that there is no difficulty that overcomes Jesus Christ and that Jesus is still on the throne. And I just wonder what difficulties you might be facing today. And the Lord has really been speaking to me, especially this past week in my study. I've been in First Peter about how gold that goes through the fire comes out refined and shows itself as pure gold. And our faith, when it goes through the fire of hardships and struggling, that it comes out proved genuine. And so even though we don't like that hard rubbing um, and it hurts sometimes, know that God is doing something with your faith in this season, that He is raising you up to be strong in Him, to be that strong child of God, and can I just say, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus yet, we want to tell you how you can do that because Jesus knew you before you were born. He's been pursuing your heart since you took your first breath. And he wants you to come to him, recognize that you have sin that he can wipe away. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I need you as a savior to come and rescue me. And I want to have that personal relationship with you. And know, friend, that you become a brand new creation in that moment. And God has such good plans for you. So if you want to pray with someone, call us at 888-665-4483. Wow, Anna, that is such a heartfelt and now word. And thank you for just pouring that out. And we just want to encourage you. You know, that is you today, that what Anna just shared about you feel like you're going through the fire, that you feel like you're going through trials and you're being tried over and over again. Know that God is with you and he strengthened you, whether it's your health, whether things are going in your marriage or your family, Jesus is with you. And I just want to encourage you, wherever you are, sometimes I'm going through the hardest things. I just lift my hands up and I praise him and I declare how good he is despite my circumstance. You know, why don't, why don't we end the program with prayer today? So let's just, uh, why don't you join us in prayer? We just got a few seconds left. So Father, we lift up all the requests that have come in now. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch these lives, that you would make a difference, that, th that, that things will never be the same. Once th they come to the throne room of God, things will never be the same. Change their lives today, Lord. Lord, make all things new in your power and in your grace, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.